Good evening po to each and everyone and welcome to our third night of our Baptist Distinctive Conference. And uh, we are going to be studying about the priesthood of every believer tonight with Pastor Joel Madlangawa. But before that, let us start off our uh, this night by singing. Uh, while we're singing, you can uh, share this video, uh, invite your friends, tag your friends, share it on Messenger so that we'll have more people join us uh, tonight. So let us sing our song, uh, first song tonight, which is All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Amen, and uh, hopefully na, that you have uh, uh, you joined us in singing. And uh, keep sharing, Paul. Keep tagging your friends, and uh, hopefully, marami na po tayo later on when we listen to the preaching of the Word of God. I hope that you have been blessed through the uh, previous three preachings: one preaching on uh, biblical authority, and we have we have had two messages on autonomy of the local church. And if you weren't present yesterday, last night, for our by um, question and answer portion, uh, you can still review uh, that or uh, watch it again. It's just here on our page. Anyway, before any uh, more announcements, let me just open us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning for giving us another opportunity, a privilege to continue our study on uh, our Baptist distinctives. I pray, Lord, that you uh, be the one to work uh, in the hearts of the people who will be listening in. Uh, use the preaching of uh, Pastor Joel to be a challenge and a reminder to each and everyone. I pray, Lord, that uh, for everything that we're going to do tonight, uh, we will uh, glorify um, no one but you, dear Lord. And I pray that you be the one to bring those who are, uh, uh, to remind those uh, who are uh, uh, planning to listen to the conference, uh, to uh, tune in tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you also remove any distractions, dear Lord, so that we'll be able to focus and get more uh, out of the preaching. And uh, we pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, again, uh, for our announcements for tonight, we're not we're not going to take long with our program. Uh, we'll try to get on with the preaching as soon as we can. Uh, for announcements, I have sent in our group chat our a new book about uh, persecutions of how the uh, Protestants and uh, Protestants have persecuted uh, Baptists. 
Um, you can see that I have uploaded that on our two group chats. Uh, yeah, two group chats, and you can download that uh, for free. And hopefully that will be a blessing to you. That will be a good uh, supplement for the preaching that we will hear from Pastor Jesse. He will be preaching on individual soul liberty, and he will be touching a little bit on that as well. I'm sure we're going to hear more about that from him. Um, and uh, we, we do have our question form that is in our group chat. If you have any questions, write it down. And after the uh, preaching, you can put it in the question form so that we can prepare uh, as, as early as you can so that we can prepare for it on next Thursday's uh, question and ans uh, answer portion. Um, and, though, and also for our schedule, so we have uh, tonight, of, of course, and uh, our next preaching after tonight will be on Monday, uh, hopefully by Pastor uh, Angel Duenas. He's uh, battling some health issues right now. So let's pray that the Lord will strengthen him and give him good health if, he, if uh, and he'll be able to send us a message if not, we'll update you on uh, what, what we're uh, going to be doing for that. So that will be on Monday uh, at 8.30 p.m. And he will be talking about um, the two ordinances. So tonight we have the priesthood of every believer. And on Monday at 8.30, we have the two um, ordinances. Okay, so let us go to some, of, some activities here uh, tonight. Uh, first of all, let us go to... Uh, habang kayo share and uh, inviting your friends, let us go to our um, uh, dito, uh, fill in the blanks from the two messages that we heard last um, Tuesday. Ano po, fill in the blanks. Sulit nyo lang po, eh, itype nyo lang po dyan sa comment section yung inyong sagot and the first one will be, the, will be uh, winning. We'll, we'll be receiving a point for, for tonight. So here's the first one. Yeah, and I don't know if it showed already. The church operates. Brother, nag show na ba yan? Yung ano? The church operates as a blank body and blank entity. And po, so ano po ang sagot yan? The church operates as a blank body and blank entity. So dalawa po yung uh, blanks yan. Just put it. Uh, isahan na lang po sa inyong mga comments, sa inyong mga sagot. And I believe that is in the, ano po, nandyan po yan sa mga notes po ninyo. Uh, sa akin, hindi lumilitaw yung question. Pero anyway, uh, since uh, ako naman yung nag-type, uh, gets pa. So the church operates as a blank body and blank entity. Parang masyado atang mahirap yung nailagay na tanong ng ating uh, team. Ano po? So clue, uh, <laughs> kahit na dalawang blank yan, same word lang po yung sagot. Yan, isa lang. So talking about the autonomy of the local church. Ay, hindi pala. Ay, hindi, tama, isa lang. Yan, dito lang po yan sa ano. Uh, dito lang sa comments. Wag na po dun sa group chat. Dito na po sa comment section. Okay, kung uh, sige po, hanapin nyo muna sa uh, inyong uh, notes. Okay, the answer is not one. Pero pwede na rin naman. Uh, okay, so we have the uh, right answer. Pwede, okay, the exact answer is individual. Ano po, pero tanggapin na rin natin yung independent because uh, ganun din naman. So, dalawahin natin. Anyway, hindi naman uh, qualified yung uh, nasa Cambodia. So, <laughs> kunin po natin yung independent. Okay, that's the uh, answer that we're getting, uh, that we're going to get tonight. So, that is the first one. Uh, what about the second question here? The local church operates on the direction of the... Yan, so tatlo pong words yan. The local church operates on the direction of the Ano po yan? Uh, yung mga linya po dyan, yan yung exact na uh, spelling din. Yung, so para may clue din po kayo. Okay, we have our winner here, Sister Mary Rose Cordero, Lord Jesus Christ. Yan po ang sagot. 
operates on the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, third question for tonight. In church discipline, the voice of the blank blank is final. The voice of the blank blank is final. Remember the local church po yan. The, uh, the, the voice of the blank blank. Okay, two words. First word, five letters. Second word, ayan, bilangin na lang. Three, six, seven, eight letters. The voice of the blank blank. Two words po yan. Clue. L tsaka A. Yun. Yan, medyo, ano na yan, madali na. L tsaka A. Sayang, LC, LC. Yung nakita ko, LC, dapat LA. The voice of who? Ah, yung isa, SM naman yung sagot. Ako, LA. Tama na yung L ni, ni Judy. Yung A. Yun, vera. Huma, humahakot ng uh, award ng mga points si Sir Joseph. Local Assembly. Yan po ang, ang tamang sagot. Local Assembly. Okay. So, ito naman tayo. Let's move to uh, two truths, one lie. So, ilag- comment nyo lang po yung number nung lie. Ano po? Comment nyo yung number nung lie. Ito yung first statement natin na hindi ko po mabasa, pero basahin nyo. Yan, okay na, lumito na. The church ought to exercise its authority in spiritual matters and life-changing decisions of members of the church. The church can only exercise its authority over its members on spiritual matters. If the personal practice of a member is inconsistent with their position as a member, the church may exercise disciplinary action. So ano po yung mali dyan? One, two, or three? And one, two, or three, lama po ang sagot. And um, wala pa po, wala pa pong tamang sagot. Number one, number two, or number three. Okay, so na, meron na pong tamang sagot. The, the correct answer is number one. Okay po, um, the church authority is for the spiritual matters po. Um, and... Uh, Pwede pong mag-suggest on life-changing decisions, pero it, the church cannot insist on the decision po. Ano po, the mere, mere suggestions lang po magagawa ng church sa isang tao. Uh, okay, I think sa at individual soul liberty, maintindihan pa po natin yan. Okay, so next one. Uh, yeah, the church is subject to influence from certain men in the church. The church is not subject to external groups. The church is subject to the body's decision through votes among the church members. Ano po ang tamang sagot? Ano po yung, ano po yung mali dyan? One, two, or three? Which one is the lie? Okay, again, Sister Mary Rose Cordero got the uh, correct uh, answer. So ang in, ang dapat po uh, a majority hindi lang po certain men in the church. So that means hindi lang po pastor lang or preachers lang but the church as a whole. Okay? So I hope that we remember that from the preaching last time. Okay. Last one for our two truths one lie. The the church uh, the the autonomy, the limitation of autonomy is limited by the great commission, limited by elders of the church limited by the laws of the state which is the lie here this is from pastor jesse's preaching okay i don't know itong comment na to ay uh, okay so we have again yeah talagang uh no si sir joseph the correct answer is limited by the elders of the church okay so hindi po uh, uh, ang elders ang naglilimit ng autonomy po. Okay, so 
Kung alam po tayo ng isang ano, uh, picture, okay? So bring me, take just a, take a photo uh, and then send you po sa group chat uh, kung kayo po ang uh, mauuna, okay? Take a photo of you with your pet. Yan. Yan you with your pet. If you have a pet, send you po yan sa group chat. Tingnan natin kung sino yung mauuna. You with your pet. Yan. Sa mga pabilisan, eh, advantage yung mabibilis yung internet. Ano po? Photo of you and your pet, send you po yan sa ating group chat. And then, yeah, i, uh, bibigay po, ipapakita po sa atin mamaya kung sino po ang nanalo sa virtual bring me na ito. Okay? So, habang nagpo-posing po kayo, remember just you and your pet. Habang, uh, while you are uh, posing for a great photo, um, let us move to our... Oh, meron ng picture dito. Ah, totoong pet dapat. <laughs> <laughs> Yon, oh, kit naman po nung pudel. Ah, sa mga <laughs> nasa group chat po, ano. Yan, so we're seeing uh, dogs and cats. So send lang po ng send. While you're sending uh, your best photos there, let us listen to a um, special number. Uh, let's listen to a song entitled Calvary's Love.
Amen. Thank, uh, thank the Lord for the two couples there. Uh, and uh, thank the Lord for the uh, lyrics of that song, Calvary's Love. And um, tonight, before the preaching of the Word of God, let us sing our theme song, uh, and the, uh, our shortened theme song, and we're only going to sing uh, the stanza that is related to the priesthood of the believers. So let us uh, please join us in singing our theme song. If you already know the words to this, mas makapapagsabay po kayo. But if not yet, uh, you can study that. Uh, our, our YouTube channel is there uh, for the demos of that. So let us sing po our theme song for tonight. Amen po. So we're going now to our preaching tonight by Pastor Joel Madlangawa on the priesthood of every believer. The notes po for this preaching have been sent uh, through our group chat. So please just go there if you would like to have a copy uh, while you are listening. So uh, without further ado, let us listen to Pastor Joel on the priesthood of every believer. Amen. Good evening po to my brothers and sisters in the Lord and welcome po. This is the third night of our uh, Baptist Distinctives online conference. So tayo po ay nakapakinig na po ng uh, two preachings regarding uh, the first two installment of our Baptist Distinctive, and that is a uh, letter B. As a biblical authority wherein we have learned that we have no other authority for faith and practice but the Bible, only the Word of God is our basis in all of the faith and practices that we are doing as a church or as a Baptist. And then not only that, but we also studied uh, about the autonomy of the local church, actually preached by two preachers. And we have learned there that as Baptists, we are independent, we are self-governing, we are self-propagating, self-supporting local New Testament Church, and also we have learned about our limitations or the limit of our autonomy. It doesn't mean that because we are independent, we can just do whatever we want to do, but everything that we must do is limited by the Word of God and limited by the rights of every believer or members that are given to us from the Word of God. So tonight, we are going to uh, study about the third installment of our Baptist distinctive, and we call that the priesthood of the believers. So before we start, let us uh, first go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for another night that you've given us to continue studying, Lord, about our Baptist distinctive. We thank you, God, because you have given us a heritage, a legacy, wherein, Lord, we can trace back our conviction and what made us who we are today, Baptists. I pray, Lord, that as we learn and study these things, 
will the able of God to see. Why these pictures are very important, Lord, not only in our lives as your children, but also in our church life. So that, Lord, everything that we will do in the church will always be according to your will. I pray, Lord, that tonight you will forgive us of our sins and make us worthy. And that you will help me, Lord, to be a blessing to your people. I hope and I pray, O oh God, that your people will listen attentively with the desire, O oh God, not only to learn, but to apply the things, O oh God, that we are going to learn tonight. Bless us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Salamat pong muli sa inyo pong uh, pagtiyatsyaga. Sa amin po at sa pakikinig po at panunood ng ating pong uh, online Baptist Distinctive Conference. As I have said, we have already studied two of our distinctive, but this uh, prison of the believers is what we call a uh, distinctive that is quite strange. And the reason for that is because of the distortion in the meaning of the word priest. You see, when we hear the word priest, the first thing that comes into our mind is the man of the cloth of the Roman Catholic Church. We actually say that the man of the cloth is a man or a father that dresses like a mother. And this uh, priest of the Roman Catholic Church is a person who can forgive sins and actually accept confessions. So, of course, those things are not biblical. Those are not biblical concepts. It is only a distortion of the meaning of the Bible word priest. You see, biblically, a priest is not a subset of a Christian who have the authority to forgive sins. A priest, biblically, is not a special Christian called to full-time ministry. A priest is not another term for pastor, as many Protestants believe. Actually, we are not Protestant. As Baptists, we are not Protestant. We were already there, even before the Catholic Church, and even before the uh, Reformation or the start of Protestantism. So we are not Protestant. So, but the biblical meaning of the word priest is that this person, a priest, was once a sinner, washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, born from above by God the Father, sealed by the Holy Spirit, whose name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven, whether you are a man or a woman, whether you are young or old, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are black or brown or yellow or white, if you are set tonight, then you are a priest in the sight of God. Meaning to say, all believers are priests in the sight of God. That is our position in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I am a priest, you are a priest, if you are saved, all ten people are priests in the sight of the Lord. But let us not call ourselves a father, because there is only one father, and that is our father, which is in heaven. So that should be very clear to each and every one of us. So, as we study the priesthood of the believers, we need to understand the background of this. And what is the New Testament uh, verses that we can base our study today? So, as we look at it, let us open our Bible in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 4 to 10. The Bible says, Only coming as unto a living stone, this allowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him 
shall not be confounded. Amen. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. Even to them which tumble at the Lord, be disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So this is the real basis of our being priests in the sight of God, or the priesthood of the believers. But as we study the priesthood of the believers, I believe that we need to look at the theological background of this, so that we can understand how this came to be. How did we become? priest in the sight of God. So, as I have said, we're going to look at the theological background of this. So, our priesthood is based actually on the higher priesthood of the Lord, Jesus Christ. He was always first. When it comes to our lives, and everything that we do, and everything that we are, the Lord Jesus Christ is always first. In Psalms 110 and verse number 4, the theological background says, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. So this is something that God established, and this is something that God proclaimed, and this will never be changed. So the Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ forever after the order of Melchizedek. So this is the verse that was used for the theological background of the priesthood of every believer. Now, in Hebrews chapter 7, we're not going to read the whole chapter, it offers a full-scale explanation of the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to know about the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to read the whole chapter 7, and you will have a greater understanding of his priesthood. But we're not going to go to that, but we will just mention here that this priesthood is not from the tribe of Levi. You know, in the Old Testament, we understand, if you have studied the Old Testament priesthood, that only those people from the tribe of Levi can qualify as a priest. But you know that the Lord Jesus Christ did not come from the tribe of Levi, but he came from the tribe of Judah. So that's why his priesthood is actually different from the priesthood of the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. You see, he is a priest not of the Old Order, but he is a priest of the New Order. And that is the Order of Melchizedek. So what are the differences between the, uh, the priesthood of the Levites and the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ after the order of Melchizedek? Number one, Christ was sinless while priests were sinful. That's why we will notice in the Old Testament, before even trying to offer something, they need to make an offering first for themselves so that they will be cleansed and will be uh, right to offer something to the Lord in behalf of the people. But that's not the case in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was sinless, and therefore he was a perfect offering. Not only that, but Christ offered himself, while priests offered bulls and goats, animal sacrifices. The Lord Jesus Christ's sacrifice was once and for all, while the priests offered what is something that is continual and ongoing. That's why we will go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 to 14. We will clearly see the contrast between the offering of the Lord Jesus Christ and the offerings that the priests are administering 
uh, in the Old Testament. You see what the Bible says? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 to 14, it says here, By the weeks will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So yes, this offering is once for all time. It is something that he did and the efficacy of that offering will be forever. In verse 11, as a contrast, the Bible says, and every priest stand that daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, the animals, which can never take away things. So what this priest are offering is only a foreshadowing of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do once and for all. And it's going to be a done deal when the Lord Jesus Christ finally did that. But in verse number 12 it says, But this man, referring to Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So we can see the vast and great difference between the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ compared and contrasted to the priesthood in the Old Covenant or in the Old Testament. So now, because of Christ's higher order in better priesthood, all human priesthood is fulfilled and is abolished. So when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, when he fulfilled all of those things that pertains to the priesthood of the tribe of Levi, when he when all those sacrifices and offerings and all of these things were uh, performed by the Lord Jesus Christ as the substance, then those priesthood were fulfilled and those things were abolished. And yet, and yet, even though the priesthood was abolished, the Lord Jesus Christ started a new priesthood and we became priests because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor, how? Well, by being in Christ. Jesus Christ is our high priest. When we got saved, we are in Christ, and therefore, as we are in our high priest, then he made us a priest for himself and for his father to perform spiritual sacrifices that will be a something that is availing, not only to the Lord Jesus Christ, but to the people that we are going to lead for the Lord Jesus Christ. So how did uh, this all happen? Okay, as we continue on our background, you see in the Old Testament, God has a plan. Meron pong plan ang Diyos patungkol po dito. That's right. The peace of the, of the believers is not a New Testament concept. It did not start in the New Testament, but it started in the Old Testament. When God uh, revealed His plan to Moses at Mount Sinai. And that plan is to have a kingdom of priests, meaning to say a large number of priests, meaning to say a people that are all priests before God. And he mentioned it to Moses at Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 to 6. And this is what the Bible says. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him, out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, so God will give them commandments, and God will give them a covenant. And God says, if you will obey, then ye shall be a peculiar precious unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. And notice in verse number 6, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests and an holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So the plan of God is very clear. 
But his plan is to make Israel and Judah all peace. But there are conditions. And the conditions are they need to keep his commandment and the covenant that God will give unto them. So if they obey, if they the covenant, then right then and there, in the Old Testament, they are going to become a kingdom of priests. But what happened? They did not obey. You see, this is the characteristic not only of the Israelites, but this is also our characteristics. You see, all, all of us are sinners, or all, all of us are has a propensity to commit sin. If, we, if given a choice, we will always choose our own way, we will always choose sin before righteousness, because that is who we are, and that is what we are. Because of the sin nature that uh, we get from our, uh, you know, Adam and Eve. Adam, the original sin, it was passed unto each and every one of us. So, when they disobeyed, God set his plan into motion that it is going to be fulfilled. So, it does not mean that God did not succeed. No. Israelites did not obey. But God will continue his plan and because our God is a sovereign God, he is going to succeed sooner or later. So what he did is that he set up sacrificial system that is to be performed by few priests from the tribe of Levi. And all of those sacrificial systems are all the foreshadowing of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do and what the Lord Jesus Christ will accomplish at the cross of Calvary for our benefit. What are the things that he accomplished? At the cross of Calvary, among others, he accomplished our accept acceptance before God. He accomplished our forgiveness. He accomplished our reconciliation with God. So this is what he did. Why? Because of the weakness and sinfulness of man, God used the law as our school master. You see, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, the Bible says, Wherefore the law was our school master, teaching us to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith, but after that faith is come, we are no longer under a school master. That is why the law has fulfilled her duty, and that is to point us to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now that we are saved, now that we are born again, now that we become a child of God, we are now living under the grace of God and not under the law anymore. It doesn't mean that we are lawless because we obey the law of the Lord Jesus Christ, but then again, there is no more curse. Then again, there is no more punishment. Then again, there is no more condemnation. Why? Because we are justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what happened when we got saved. So the law, as our school master, brought us to Christ to show us our need of a Savior. So, what God planned in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 to 6, was left unfulfilled during the time. But then God, as I have said, all the intent of doing this is present in the Old Testament. So, in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 to 33, God proclaimed a prophecy. And this prophecy is for the fulfillment of the plan of God to have a kingdom of priests. In Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33, the Bible says, Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Why? Because the old covenant was not fulfilled. And with the house of Judah, not fulfilled by Israel, but fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. See the parallelism of the account in Exodus chapter 19 and this uh, prophecy? 
which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, say the Lord, testifying to the continuous unfaithfulness of Israel. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with all of Israel after those days, say the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So there was a prophecy that God is going to make a new covenant with them. But see, during the Old Testament, the church was still a mystery. It's still a mystery. So the, the prophets do not know anything about the church. The Jews do not know anything about the church. So when God said that he will make a new covenant with Israel, there is an implication, as, because it is still yet a mystery, that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to not only include, but he will make the church. As the, what we call, major player in the fulfillment of this prophecy. Okay, we will go uh, to that later. So God, God's will is for his plan to be fulfilled by giving or making a new covenant with Israel. And as I have said, the church. And actually Peter declared the fulfillment of this prophecy. Look at First Peter, our text, chapter 2, focusing on verse number 5 and verse number 9. So you can see that in verse number 5, the Bible says that we are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. So we are now present, and this is now pertaining to the believers. In verse number 9, the Bible says, you are a royal priesthood. So in Exodus chapter 19, the Bible says, you shall be. If you will obey and keep my covenant and commandment, you shall be the kingdom of priests. But now, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Peter says, Ye are now a royal priesthood. So, the plan of God in Exodus 19, prophesied in Jeremiah 31, was fulfilled. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, and everyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ became priest and collectively a royal priesthood and a kingdom of priests before God. So now, with the believers, God has a kingdom of priests. Amen? And that includes you, that includes me, by the grace of God. So this truth was actually fortified in Revelation. Because you, know, you see, some people may say, well, it is a covenant to Israel and Judah, so therefore that only applies to the Jews. No, no, no. I told you the church was a mystery, and yet that mystery was revealed by God and fortified in Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. I will read it and follow me very, very carefully. Verse number four, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. So this is a letter to the churches, seven churches that are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse number five, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Look at verse number 6. And hath made us kings and kings unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So that is why it is very clear that his plan in the Old Testament was fulfilled in us, it was fulfilled in the church by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as part of the new covenant that he made, not only for Israel, but was consummated in the local churches that the Lord Jesus Christ 
had built. So now it is now settled. It is now very clear that all of us are priests, and together we are now a royal priesthood and a kingdom or a nation of priests before God. Now, since we are all priests, who is our high priest? Well, of course, the answer is very obvious because we just studied a while ago that our high priest is the Lord Jesus Christ. But why do we need to answer this question? Because there are things that are going on in our churches today that are not right. There are churches who uh, think that the pastor is actually a priest. Well, he is a priest in the sense, and the, the, in the sense of we are priesthood uh, of our believers or the priesthood of all the believers. But then again, there are pastors who are thinking that in the church, the tithe and offering belongs to them because they are actually the priests that are represent the Old Testament priests. And since the priests are the ones receiving the offerings, they're saying now that I need to receive the offering because I am a priest. Not understanding the teaching of the priest of the very believer, not understanding that all of us are priests, and if they are going to insist on what they want to do, then all of us must be a recipient of the tithes and the free of tithes and the offerings that are going in our churches because all of us are priests. You see? If you're not going to study the Word of God, you will be in error. And you will be teaching something that is not right, that is not according to God's will. And you are not going uh, just to lead people astray, but you're going to put yourself to shame when you're facing the Lord Jesus Christ. The judgment seat or the bima judgment. And that is also the result. If we are not going to study the Word of God, each and every believer, we will see that later, have the responsibility and the accountability that we need to study diligently the Word of God. As Paul says happily, that we need to study to show ourselves approved to God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Well, in Hebrews chapter 4, Actually, in verse uh, number 14, we can see there that our high priest is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our being priest is not only different from the old priesthood, but it is also different from the modern day priest that is not according to the Bible. That is why the priesthood of the believers is a distinctive all the Baptists bunch together with the other distinctive. As I have said, uh, the uh, biblical authority, the autonomy of the local church, the priesthood of the believers, the two ordinances in the church, and that is uh, the Lord's Supper and baptism, the uh, individual soul liberty, the uh, same uh, membership, the uh, two ordinances, and the separation of church and state. But together, they are called the Baptist distinctive. So, what I'm telling you tonight is that we are not the only group of people who believe in the priesthood of the believers, but we are the only group of people who believe the priesthood of every believer plus the other distinctive. And once you bunch them together and you believe all of them, then we call that the Baptist distinctives. So, we are priests. As I have said, that is different from the priests today. Why? Because we are the priests with the Bible as our final authority. But modern day priests hold on tradition and church magisterium and even some other books as equal to the Word of God. There is no book that can be equal to God's Word. It is the very living Word. It is quick and powerful. It is alive. It can change life. And it is what is given to us that we may perform our duty as a priest before God. So if we are going to mix it with other things, then it's not going to be a pure priesthood, and we are not going to obey the pure word of God. Not only that, but we are priests, not only with the Bible as our final authority, but we operate under an autonomous an equal setting in a local church. We need to say as priests we are equal. We will study that later. So I hope that you will stay with me. 
But both when they priests are under a hierarchy. So they are priests, but there is a higher priest, and there is a higher priest, like for example, a priest, and then there will be what we call a, uh, a monsignor, and there will be a cardinal, and there will be an arch, a bishop, and an archbishop, and there will be pope. So there is a hierarchy, but in our place, the uh, order is very simple. The Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, and under the Lord Jesus Christ, we are all equal. That is our organizational church when it comes to the priesthood of every believer. So we will study that, as I have said, later. Not only that, but as a New Testament priest, we are competent and we are with liberty. That is why this uh, prison of every believer is a is a uh, distinctive that complemented the other Baptist distinctive, where we complement the individual soul liberty or, co or, or competency of every soul. And uh, uh, th that we are free and that we are competent to life because we have the Holy Spirit, but the modern day uh, priests today, they are not free to make decisions. Why? Maybe because of ignorance or because of the order that they are under in their uh, particular priesthood. Not only that, but as a biblical priest, we are sanctified to offer and perform ritual sacrifices to God. That is our main job. That is our main duty. But the priest today, the modern day priest, what are they doing? They are busy fighting for social justice or for social cause. Well, it is not wrong to do that, but it is not our job. That is the reason why God starts the government, because the government is the one to take care of that. That is the job that God has given to the government, and we have our job, and our job as a priest is to offer spiritual sacrifices to God, not to allow ourselves to be entangled with the affairs of this world, but to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, to follow him, to deny ourselves, and to take up our cross. And that is our job as priests. Well, modern day priests, they try to spearhead political changes wherever they are. You see, again, not abiding by the separation that God has given unto us. And they're even trying to control even the temporal power. That is why in time past, even in our time today, there are what we call a state religion. And because they're state religion, they are so powerful, they can even control the state, or they may be controlled by the state, but whatever they want will happen, so they are actually destroying the individual soul liberty given to us by our God. So, as Baptists, we adhere to this kind of priesthood. And as priests, we are solely at the disposal of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is who we are. That is what we want to do. We are only under the command of our high priest, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, being a priest has what we call of privileges, opportunities, responsibilities, and accountability. So we're going to look at some of this as we continue our study of the priesthood of the believers. So what does it mean to be a priest? Okay, number one. Each believer priest has equal standing before God. We all have what we call equal standing before God. There is no one who is greater than any other priest. So as a priest, we're all the same with God. If we're, go if we're going to read uh, uh, the verse here in Galatians chapter 3, in verse number 28, the Bible says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So you see our equality. As please, we are all equal in the sight of God. That is why I have said a while ago, being a priest is our 
position, positionally. We are all priests before God. And therefore, we are all equal. It means that nobody is an underling when it comes to understanding and applying the scriptures in our lives. It means that we can understand the word of God. Why? Why are we equal? Why is it that we are not an underling? When it comes to understanding and applying the word of God. Why? Because we have the same book. We have the same Savior. We have the same Holy Spirit. We have the same tools given to us by God. That if we are going to really study the word of God, we can understand it through the help of the Holy Spirit. And upon understanding it, we will know how to rightly apply these things in our life. And as a priest, it is our privilege to know God's word and to apply God's word in our lives. Nobody can dictate to us because we are equal in the sight of God. So that is the reason why. As priests, we must not depend on the leaders for our learning. So Pastor, I mean to say that we do not have to respect. No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not respect the pastor. I'm not saying not uh, honor the pastor. I'm not saying not obey the pastor. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we should not depend on our leaders for our learning. Why? Because we can study the Word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We can learn what God wanted us to do in our life. We can discern. The Bible says we can prove all things. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. We can try or test the spirits. First John chapter 4 and verse number 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So we have that capability, we have that ability to understand the word of God. And therefore, as priests in the sight of God, we can actually learn and apply those things in our lives. And by the way, of God, we can even the preachings of those people that are leading us in the church. Not higher as a priest, but they were given an office by God in order, in order to oversee for us in the local church. Like in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, they heard the preaching of the Apostle Paul. They received the word of God, but when they went home, they opened the scripture to see to it if everything that they heard is really according to the word of God. Question, why? What? If they found out that it is not all according to the word of God, I believe they will go to the Apostle Paul and lovingly correct him, pointing the scripture and the right interpretation. And as a priest, we can do that. We should do that. We must do that so that we can help each other grow in the Lord by the grace of God. So in this matter, as please, we are all equal. But this is the problem. Some of us are not diligent in studying the Word of God. That is why you are still unlearned up to this time. That's why you are still dead. You still desire milk instead of the meat of the Word of God. And because of that, because you neglected the Word of God, you did not study the Word of God diligently. You became ignorant and you became dependent upon others for your learning. And because of that, you can be susceptible and vulnerable to the leader that may deceive you, bewitch you, coerce you, manipulate you. Why? Because you do not know. The word of God. And as Christians and as priests, it is our duty, our responsibility, as well as our privilege to know the word of God. Kaya nga, tinawag tayo mga Kristiyano. Talo na, tinawag tayong baptist. At minsan, nilalagay pa natin sa ating pangalan, Bible, baptist. Eh, doon wala tayong alam sa Bible. That is just a shame. So instead of being competent as designed by God, we are becoming incompetent, not realizing that we are being led to unbiblical ideas, 
teachings that is outside of the word of God. So if you don't be led astray, it is not the fault of God. He gave us all the tools that we need. If you will be led astray, it is our fault because we have neglected our duty and our privilege of knowing the word of God. You see, at least we do not just bow down to what others will say. Even uh, if it is not according to the Bible anymore, we obey everything that is biblical, but everything that is not biblical, we actually reject. You see, sometimes there is a pastor, I'm a pastor, I'm not anti-pastor, but, but I have heard that some of these things are all of these things, and in the past, I have done some of these things, there is a pastor who will stand behind the pulpit and he will preach, touch not the anointed of the Lord, and then he will say that you are a member of the church, you have no right to question the pastor, you have no right to doubt the pastor, you have no right not to obey the pastor, because God will hold you accountable if you are not going to obey your pastor, or if you will touch the anointed of the Lord. So you see, sometimes you say, yes, we should not uh, uh, try to disrespect or disobey our our pastor because God will hold us accountable, not understanding that this particular phrase, if you're going to study the background, is saying physical harm to the anointed of the Lord, and sad to say, if you will go to the New Testament and study the Word of God, you will understand that all saved people are anointed by God. So it means to say that we should not physically harm each other, but you will just Bow down in belief. Why? Because you do not know the word of God. Why? Because you're not studying the word of God. Why? Kasi tamad ka. Marami kang times sa Facebook. Marami kang times sa mga chismis. Marami kang times sa mga walang kwentang kwentuhan. But when it comes to the word of God, you have no time. You're neglecting that. And that is why you're falling prey to these things. And then uh, there is a, 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 a saying, and they will say, the pastor is always right. If the pastor is wrong, go back to rule number one, which is the pastor is always right. And then you will just bow down to that. And then God will only speak to the pastor because he's the leader. And then God will speak to him. And God will tell the pastor what he needs to tell the church. Ladies and gentlemen, as a preach we have, later on we will go there. And there is access to God. We can speak directly to God. God can speak directly to us through his word. Yun po yung dapat natin mahintindihan, mga kapatid. Wag po tayo basta na lamang maniniwala at susunod sa anumang bagay na hindi naaayon sa salita ng Diyos. You see, one person even says that, you know, the damage sa uh, animal in the world are, uh, you know, sheep. So that is why, because we are sheep, then we are dumb. The only way that we can learn is if the shepherd will teach us, let us and men no. Yes, we are a sheep because we belong to God, but at the same time we are priests. At the same time we are so a soldier. At the same time we are God's children. At the same time we are a, we are a spiritual house. And so many other things. So do not just concentrate on being a sheep. Because we are so many other things by the grace of God. Listen to me as a priest. We must know the word of God and we can know the word of God. But let us put this to balance. Oh, you see, Pastor, I'm a priest. So therefore, I can do whatever I want to do. No, no, no. Let's put this to the proper perspective. Priests are not lone rangers. You need to, to remember that and understand that. We must not fall into this misconception. When you say, I am a priest, I have the Holy Spirit, I have direct access to God, therefore my interpretation of the Bible is as valid as your interpretation. I do not have to listen to you. I do not have to listen to what anyone may say. My religion is only between me and God, and I will do what I want to do because I am only accountable to God. No, no, no. This is a misconception. And this misconception started with a true statement that we are priests. 
that we have the Holy Spirit, that we have access to God. But then again, we need to understand that our high priest is the very person who told us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17, to obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable unto you. Listen, we are all priests. We are equal. But we are a part of the local church. And our God is a God of order. Because our God is a God of order. He placed people in churches to oversee, to pastor, to teach, not because we do not know, but to help us become better, to help us to be more equipped, to sharpen us as iron is sharpening iron, to build us up that we may be able to serve God better in our life. Because if there is no order in the church, then even though we are all priests, it may come down to anarchy. So there must be an order. So God put two offices in the church. The pastors and the deacons and the pastors are placed there by God to perform some jobs, some duties, and we as priests, and they, as they are also priests, must be under the authority delegated to them by God, because by doing so, we are obeying our high priest and are actually submitting to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. So, kuidaw, ha? Masabi mo, pag-uwi mo, ay, narinig ko, pigs ako, parang parang sa akin. No, hindi ko ganon. We have the privileges, but we also have the duties and responsibility, as well as accountability in being a priest. Number two, not just that we're equal, but each believer priest have direct access to God. It was a Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. The Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may find, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, as a priest, we have a direct access to God. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, in Matthew chapter 27, and verse number 51, the Bible says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Meaning to say, the curtain or the veil that separates us from God was torn into half, thereby giving us a direct access to God where there is no more wall of partition anymore. So as a priest, what a privilege we have that we have direct access to God. We can call him Abba, Father. There is no need for human mediators. We can go directly to God in prayers. We can go directly to God in confession, in praise, in worship, and in offering things that will glorify our God. So that is one of the blessings of the priesthood of every believer. That whenever you close your eyes, Whenever you stand up before God, or sit down before Him, or kneel before God, and bow on your heads, right at that very moment, you are in front of the train, uh, the, the throne of grace of God, wherein the Bible says that we can come boldly, confidently, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is one of the benefits of being a priest before God. Number three, each believer priest can offer spiritual sacrifices to God. So in the Old Testament, only the priest can offer sacrifice in behalf of the people. So without the priest, you cannot offer any sacrifice. You need to find the priest. And then that priest will be the one to offer what you need to give to God, what you need to offer to God. But not anymore. Because now, as priests, we can directly offer spiritual sacrifices to God. We can offer ourselves to Him. Romans chapter 12. And verse number 1. That we offer ourselves a living sacrifice, 
fully acceptable unto God. Which the Bible says is your reasonable service. So this is what we can do. We can offer our lives to God. We can offer our bodies to God. I thought, Pastor, we can only offer spiritual sacrifices. When we offer our body to God, it will be used for spiritual needs and a spiritual job. And then, uh, not only that, but if we are going to look at the uh, many uh, things here in the Bible, in Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 17, the Bible says, Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. And not only that, but our lives is actually a sacrifice as a priest unto God. And whenever we are being sacrificed for the glory of God, no matter how hard it may be, like what the Apostle Paul experienced in his life, Paul counted it all joy because himself is being offered for the glory of God. Philippians 4.18, the Bible says, But I have all and abound, being full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, and sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. So not only that we can offer ourselves to God, not only that we will be offered to God, but we can offer something to God that will help other people that are ministering for the Lord. Like when we support missionaries, that is a spiritual sacrifice. That is a spiritual offering to God. Whenever we help saints, that is a kind of spiritual sacrifice and offering that we are doing to God. That is why the Bible says it's very, very clear. When, when the Lord Jesus Christ says that if you visited those that are in prison, if you have given them uh, food to eat, clothes to wear, and water to drink, you have done it unto me. Because whatever a priest does, he do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is a privilege that we have as a priest. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 15. The Bible says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That is why as a believer, please, praise and thanksgiving must be a part of our lives. Kaya lang minsan, nakakalungkot kasi, dahil yung mga Pentecostal, charismatic, madalas magsabi yung praise the Lord, hallelujah, iniwasan na natin para hindi tayo ma-identify na kasama nila. Pero ang tunay ng mga tao na meron, na meron kakayahan, karapatan, na purihin ang Panginoon sa ating mga labi at sa ating mga puso, walang iba. Kung hindi tayong mga mana ng palataya. And we should not allow anybody to rob us all those privileges that we can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. So in another Baptist, we can say, Praise God! Amen! Say amen! <laughs> we can do that by the grace of God. That is the reason why our life must be holy because our God is holy. That is why we must be sharing the love of God. And that is why we must be doing things that will glorify the name of God. Number four, and we're all, almost uh, through. And number four, each believer are accountable to God. Each believer, please, are accountable to God. In Romans chapter 14, verse number 12, the Bible says, So then every one of us, shall give account of himself to God. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every man, everyone, may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. That is why as, as priests, we must know how to conduct ourselves or our lives before God and before fellow men. Kaya hindi barabara yung ating pamumuhay. It must be according to the standard of God. It must be according to the will of God. Why? Because we are accountable to everything that we have done in our life. The decisions that we make. The choices that we make. There is no, there is no uh, uh, shift blaming when you hear the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the backslide, God, you backslide. You cannot point your finger 
material to other people, that is the cause or the reason for your backsliding. You backslid because you have neglected your being a priest before God. You backslid because you looked at the things of this world. You backslid because you did not allow yourself to be rooted up into the world, of, rooted up into the world of God. You backslid because you did not keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot say that we can, that we do not know. We cannot say that we were forced to. Everything that we do, we will give an account before God. That is why there is no excuse for a mutual kind of life if we are a child of God. We are built for excellence. We are created unto good works and that should be the characteristic of our life by the grace of God. That's why as an individual priest we must do our job. And as a priest member of a congregation, we must help each other do their job as well by the grace of God. But we are accountable to God. That's praise number five. We are given a prophetic role in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. The Bible is very clear, but you are a closing generation. A royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Show forth the praises of him who, God, let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And what is the good work that God did in our life that is to bring us out of darkness and into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ and that is what we call salvation. So that is why as a child of God it is our duty as well as our privilege to preach the word of God to lead lost people as well to the Lord Jesus Christ to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature to win souls because that is our business. And if you are not winning souls, you have no business being a priest before God. That's our job. That is the most important spiritual uh, job that we can do for the Lord. The Bible says that we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our job is to reconcile sinners to Holy God. Can you know, please the deliverance? Can you that? There is only one mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you know, please? We now are actually we become a mediator between the laws, reconciling them to the Holy God. And we call that as being ambassadors of the Lord. Jesus Christ. That is why a priest must be busy in leading souls to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because number six, as we end, it is actually just a continuation. And number five, we are what we call agents of reconciliation. First Timothy chapter two and uh, verse number one. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1 and also uh, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 20. Let us just read this. And all things are God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ was our mediator. He reconciled us to God. And now that we are reconciled to God, He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And that is now our job. We are now mediating between sinners and God. To so it that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and not committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. So we are now agents of reconciliation. The message of the gospel was entrusted unto us 
and the message is the message of reconciliation. We are given the greatest task on earth, and that is to bring the gift of salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased on the cross of Calvary to lost people who are in need of this. Because if not for that, they are going to die, and they will spend eternity in hell. They will be there forever and forever without any chance. That is the reason why. Why? We are still alive, and while they are still alive, we need to go to them and to present to them the gospel of salvation that by the grace of God, if they will understand, and if the Holy Spirit will uh, do his job of repent of our convicting them of their sins, and that will make them repent of those sins and open their heart and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then they will be given eternal life, and just like you and me, they're going to be not only forgiven, not only saved, not only justified, but at the same time, they're also going to become a priest before God, just like you and just like me. Okay, po, mga kapatid, that is the importance of knowing this teaching of the priesthood of the believers, of understanding our rights our duties, our responsibilities, as well as our accountability before God. Napakaganda mga kapatid. If we will only apply this in our lives, then we will live a life that is pleasing unto God. So in conclusion, we must understand that this distinctive is both individual and corporate at the same time. What do you mean, Pastor? Priesthood of the believer is individual. It emphasizes the individual and soul competency. It means that as priests, we are individually competent before God. That we can do something for God. The things that we have studied. But at the same time, we have what we call the priesthood of the believers. And that emphasizes community and fellowship. What do you mean? What I mean is that as priests, we are not lone ranger. We are not alone. We are not isolated nor insulated. But we live among other priests. That's why, what's the plan of God? To have a kingdom for a nation of priests. And as a part of that community, even though we are equal yet, we are responsible to each other, to help each other, to carry one another's burden, to love each other, to forgive each other, to help each other accountable, to sharpen each other, and to lift each other up to the Lord. Jesus Christ. And most of all, ladies and gentlemen, our high priest must be preeminent in our lives. So if we will just understand and apply, put to life, the priesthood of the believers, by the grace of God, we will not only be Baptists who understand our legacy, our heritage, but we are going to be the kind of Baptist that will glorify God in our life. I hope that this lesson is a blessing to each and every one of us. And I hope that by the grace of God, all of us will continue to grow in the faith. Continue watching our conference until the end, until the 8th of October. There are so many things to be learned yet. And by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit will supply all of those things that we, by the grace of God as Baptists, as we understand our distinctives, will live according to God's will. And by doing so, many problems in our churches will be avoided because God designed all of this truth to give, to bring order in our local churches. Father, we thank you for what we have studied tonight, what we have learned. I pray, O oh God, that I have given important points, O oh God, for your people to learn and to understand. 
that they may be challenged, O God, that we are priests before you, that you designed us, Lord, to be competent, that you designed us for excellence, that you designed us, O God, to offer spiritual sacrifices unto you, that you have given us access, O God, that your power may flow through us smoothly, Lord, by the grace of God. So I just pray, Lord, that tonight we not only learned and understood these things, O God, but through the help of the Holy Spirit, and, it's, and if you will give us enough grace, these things, O God, will be applied in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. We love you, Jesus. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the message. I hope that we have been blessed and that we are reminded of the great privilege and opportunity we have to uh, offer up spiritual sacrifices uh, by ourselves to our Savior, to our God, and also the great privilege to truly bring glory to the name of our Savior. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Joel. And um, I, uh, just to remind you before we end, our next session will be on Monday, 8.30 p.m., as we listen to the distinctive of the two ordinances that we have as Baptists. So if you have any questions, just go to our question form and uh, put your questions there. It may be doctrinal that is uh, connected to our message. It may be situational. Uh, our, our speakers will uh, very much be willing to help you. Po. And on our next question and answer session, we'll be able to uh, answer those posts. So I'll leave you with a short video. Um, before we uh, end tonight, and then uh, we'll see you on Monday at 8.30 p.m. God bless you.